If you plan to do a multigroup analysis in covariance-based SEM, then it is prudent to do a measurement invariance test. Now at the date of publishing this video, SmartPLS does not have a built-in feature for this, but there is a way around it. So we must establish configural, metric, and scalar invariance. Here's how we do that. First, we need to specify groups. You can do this by going back to your data set double-clicking it, going to Generate Groups, and picking a variable to generate upon. I'm going to close this and show you the groups I've already generated. I have Male and Female and Early and Late. I'm going to use the Early and Late Adopter groups for this test. Once you have groups generated, go back, go back to your model, and calculate Basic Algorithm, and in the Data tab, make sure to uncheck base data and instead check the two groups you want to compare. Then hit Start Calculation. We now have the unconstrained model split by groups and we can assess the model fit for both groups. Click on Model Fit and we can see that for the early group we have good model fit, CFI above 0.9, SRMR below 0.08, and RMSEA below 0.1. And if we switch this over to the late group, we're still good at less than 0.1, less than 0.08, and greater than 0.9. So we have good fitting model for both groups. Configural invariance passed. Now for metric invariance, this gets a little bit harder. We need to produce the standard errors for the factor loadings. To do this, go back, double click the path that is constrained to one, and get rid of that constraint. Apply. You're going to do this for each factor, and instead place the constraint on the variance of the latent variable. I'll do this in Fast Forward. Okay, our factor anchors are now the variance for each latent factor and not an indicator factor loading. And then go to Calculate, and the basic algorithm, do not bootstrap, just do the basic algorithm. And accepting all these defaults, making sure your data is still split by group, hit Start Calculation, and go over here to Factor Loadings, List Unstandardized, and you'll see we have the estimate and the standard error. And we have this both for early and for late. So what we can do is we can set it to early, copy to Excel, go over to a new workbook in Excel, paste this in A1, and then go back to our output in Smart PLS, go to late, copy this again, and stick it in Excel. And we're doing this because there is no current built-in way to assess metric invariance or scalar invariance in Smart PLS CBSEM. Perhaps at the time you're watching this, there is a way, and I'll have made a new video for that. But for now, on June 5th, 2025, there is no way to do this with a built-in feature in Smart PLS CBSEM. So I've built a way for you. It is in the Stats Tools package on the StatWiki. If you go to the StatWiki and scroll down on the main page, you'll see this Stats Tools package. Follow these instructions to get it installed and working. And when you open it, you'll see something like this, several tabs. One of them is called Z Invariance or Z Invariance. And we're just going to do a z-score test. We're going to compare the loadings and their standard error across groups. And by doing that, create a z-score, which we can then generate a p-value from, and then determine if those paths are variant or invariant. Variant meaning they differ, which we don't want in a measurement invariance test, or invariant meaning they do not differ. Now, because we are estimating many of these simultaneously, essentially testing a whole family of hypotheses, we may suffer from family-wise bias or error. And so you can apply a Bonferroni's or a home correction. I'll be using a home correction because it's less strict. But essentially, this makes the level of significance required much lower, meaning you have to have a lower p-value or higher z-score to establish actual difference if you're estimating more than just a few differences at a time. So you can use this tool to do that. I'll show you how to do that right now. We need the estimate and standard error from group one and group two. 
and those labels for the parameters. So let's get that. We just pasted those over in this workbook. Here are those parameter labels and the estimate and the standard error for group one. And then let me get rid of these columns, the estimate and the standard error for group two. And we don't need these columns. And we also don't need the header here. So we have this table. I'll just select all of it and copy and stick it here starting in A2. And it goes well past what I already have here. So I'm just going to select these here and fill the rest of those cells. And then a very crucial step is select G1, right click it and sort ascending. This is one of the assumptions of the home correction. It's just one of those steps you have to take is to sort the P values. And what we see is that although initially we may have assumed that these factor loadings were significantly different based on their Z scores, and we can see those estimates are quite different. When we add the home correction, it corrects it back to invariant. So they are not different. And we want to see invariant all the way down for a metric invariance test. And we do. Wahoo! Now, if we didn't, we'd want to at least see invariant on a minimum of two factor loadings per latent factor, and then we'd have partial metric invariance. The next step is scalar invariance. Again, there's no built in way to do this in smart PLS at this moment, but the method to address it is very similar. So we're going to go back over to smart PLS and go back. And what we need to do is go to calculate basic and see down here where it says mean structure. We need to change this to estimate with factor means fixed to zero and start. And now we have a mean structure right here. If you open that up, measurement model is what we want to look at, not structural model. And now these are the means for the items or their intercepts and their standard errors. Here it is again for early and late. We'll just copy this, do what we did before. Go get it for late. Remove the columns we don't need and the row we don't need. Copy this whole table. And now let's paste this in here. Hey, hey, that's better. And let's sort by G1. Okay. Now what we find is that we do have some differences when it comes to means. Not all of them, but many of them. The question is, are we invariant enough? Are there any factors that are completely represented in the variant area? So efficacy four, let's see if efficacy one, two, and three are also up here. So when it comes to efficacy, there are different levels when it comes to early and late adopters. You know what, that makes a lot of sense actually. Typically those who are confident with technology, high efficacy, are early adopters. So it makes sense that the mean value would differ. Playfulness, two and one and three and four. Playfulness is completely up here. And perhaps those who are early adopters also play more with technology than those who are not early adopters. That also makes sense. Last is ease of use. Looks like one, two and four are up here, but three is not. But I would be hesitant to make any claims on the means of these items across groups. So we have met metric and configural invariance, but not scalar invariance. Nevertheless, in most behavioral theories, we are not concerned about the item means. We are more concerned with the factor loadings. And so we can probably move forward. But that is how you would assess configural, metric, and scalar invariance in Smart PLS CBSEM as of the making of this video.